know that now. I want to get as many repetitions in as I can. Teaching her that if you follow my hand, good things happen and I can guide you. So that was a little tap. So I'm teaching her that when I tap her, if she turns in the direction of the thigh that I tapped her on, right, then she gets a reward for paying attention. Later on in the future, that'll help maybe when she feels a vibration or maybe hears a little bit of like another dog barking or a car going by. And somebody will be able to give her a little back to the ear. And she'll come to get food instead of reacting at whatever's distracting her or stressing her out. And the person is just to teach her to follow that hand. So we're going to see if I can get her to go in a circle. This is, for most dogs, that's very difficult to do. She got a in that here. And the reason for that is because I'm leaning over her, so a lot of... And then she gets food. I can take my hand away to see if she stays, and then I'll give her more food. And for free, you guys can kind of do this and show her a thumb. So what did you tap her nose? Tap her um, so I just very gently, but just watch her with it. Some dogs don't like it, so you just kind of make it that she's going to be okay with it. I'll try it a few more times. So, here, I'll here. so I'm going to try it at SIT. Perfect. Somebody's been working on it. I don't want to wait too long, um, and then she gets up and messes up. So I want to make sure I give her as much opportunity to work on the sit stay as I can with the short little intervals. So I'll wait for her to stop sniffing. I'm not going to ask her to do anything right now because she's not paying attention to me, and we haven't gone that far into training where I can ask her mm -hmm. to do things when she's distracted. So I'm just going to wait. There you go. And I'm going to see if I can get her into a sit. Wait a couple seconds. Good. Yeah, you have put her hands up like this. Good. She knows like a sit or a down for that little tap that I did. So there what happened is she did turn around, but she kind of went to the wrong side. So that's why I didn't reward her for that. But I did reward her because she said, and if you guys notice, I'm using my left hand this time instead of my right. I would have liked to use my right, but because I'm on this side of the crate, she's going to be also she'll be more tired and a dog that's tired is usually more relaxed. Thank you. 
give her a little piece here. So there she might have got excited. My hand might have been over her head. So we just wait. And you can tell she's tired. So all this mental work is tiring her out. Tiring her out. Her tongue is hanging out. Mm -hmm. It's wide. I'm going to give her a little tap. There we go. Look at that. I'll wait till she needs looks in my direction. I might even give her a little tap on the shoulder and reward. So depending on what side she's on. Yeah, because right now when she has certain feelings or she just feels kind of lethargic, mm -hmm. and if that makes her happy, just let her do that. Once she establishes a relationship and she gets really good at understanding what you want her to do, then you can stop, start interrupting that spinning behavior. But for now, she's just, this is what I do when I get happy or stressed or excited. I let my feelings out by spinning. Yeah. But it's pretty good that she's able to just plop right by you. Know? Right, she's tired. She's working a lot. So I'm going to put this on her. Um, let her smell, again, because she cannot hear, sees a little bit, um, anything new, I'll always just let her, there you go, smell it, smell it first, and then put it on with a treat. So that way it's not that stressful, because I noticed when she was in the crate, I might have tried to, um, I think this was looped around a couple times, and I was trying to unloop it, and she got stressed a little bit, and I think that's why she jumped out of the crate. So now I gotta take the blue one out, so I'm going to use food. You've got a good nose on you. So shoulder, shoulder, and I'll wait. So when she's like this, I'll wait for her to settle. There you go. There you go. I know I wanted to take the leash off but change of plans because her mind went somewhere else. So sometimes it's not about what I plan to do with the dog is what behaviors the dog is throwing at me. And what she's comfortable with. Right, exactly. So there I didn't give her anything. I'm gonna see if I can get her this. There you go. Because I tapped her, um, I think it was her left side, but she turned to the right, so I'm not gonna reward her. I'll tell her good girl, but I'm not gonna give her any food for that. She seems to know I have, I have the food. Oh yeah. So. And then I'll back away, little pressure, and reward. And she's not really going to run with this, but I just want to introduce it to her a little bit. Pressure and move. So that way she doesn't either ignore the leash pulls, she starts just being aware of them, and then maybe you guys eventually will be able to help guide her with the leash, not just using the hand. just stationary behaviors. A sit, a down, being calm, being relaxed, and you can feed her as many treats as you want now because she's calm and relaxed. Perfect. Should we give her her bowl? Which would be best? Maybe her bowl. 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 So that for her, that's an introduction. Yes. Okay. Um, it's just kind of letting her know you. that to, yeah, right, to that's what I mean. So yeah. if somebody comes to see her, mm -hmm. we would ask them to, to lure the dog to their hands so that you have to Because she doesn't know really how she's supposed to communicate with somebody. Right. Right. The leash sometimes doesn't work because I know a lot of dogs pull on 
on the leash, so you can't really communicate through the leash, so we have to find another way to communicate yeah. with her that's not going to get conflicted or confusing. Okay. okay so, so I'll hold her to make it easier for you. And if you want, you can walk right up to her and 